Hello, my name is Kelly Corsi Gray, and welcome to the Art of Photography. This is lesson number seven. You may notice that I show you a lot of images of flowers, and one of the reasons is they're easy subjects. We can find them, they stay still except for a little wind, they're beautiful and colorful, and they come in lots of gorgeous shapes and sizes. This weekend, I drove over to the Southern Alleghenies Museum of Art in Ligonier because their gardens are always chock full of fantastic photo flowers and you can get incredible photographs at the Southern Alleghenies Museum of Art. Now, when they're open, you can always pop by as well and see the latest exhibit. Remember, photography is all about light, and light can make a great difference, and it can make or break a great photograph. Here are some columbines. Again, this is one of my favorite flowers, so I took several images. Here you can see that there was a lot of light, but it was quite diffuse. Here you can see there's some very harsh light on the same exact flowers. And here is a comparison between the two. You can choose your preference between the two, but notice how the light activates that stem in the background on the right. Even though I really like the light on the photograph, suddenly an element that is kind of dull and diffuse on the left has become a bit more of a prominent line and it's starting to be distracting. So, how do we fix it? Well, I could change my aperture if I'm using a digital SLR mirrorless camera. With my phone, I would really need to just shift my position and my perspective or use the portraiture mode. If I had my bigger camera with me, I would choose an F4 or an F2.8 aperture, and that way more and more of my background would be blurred and it would be far less distracting. Now, when you take a photograph, ultimately, you're trying to tell a story. In both of these images, I snapped photos of the gardens, and the gardens are absolutely beautiful, but neither one of these photos really shows the beauty of the garden, nor do either of them tell a story. So they're just kind of a general, this is us, and on the left, you can see power lines and a fence, that's a main road. I could have gotten a car. I didn't, but I could have. So there's a lot going on. And in neither of these photos am I really excited about visiting this place. And so they're not successful photographs to me. Now, I wanted to show the beauty of the gardens. And so here I walked around and I said, oh, you know, I'll put the horizon line up at the top. There's a nice red sculpture that gives me a little color variety but I like the trail, there's a big patch of dirt. So what do I do? How do you fix a picture? Well, number one, you move your feet or you move the camera, you move yourself, you move around and you try different places and different angles. By moving to this location, I still have my red sculpture, I have the background and I've started to put some different things in the foreground. But on this image, I put the sky at the one third line from the bottom, and it's just a bit too much sky. Here, I moved and I got a different angle, but I've kind of dissected the picture right down the middle, and you'll notice that the colors are not as vibrant. Well, I shouldn't say not as vibrant. The blues, periwinkle blues, and the whites are beautiful and vibrant, but there's not as much diversity. This is the image I felt was most successful. Now I was running around the gardens with my iPhone as well as my other camera. I wanted to take this picture with the iPhone to show you, you can get absolutely brilliant things. All you have to do is move your feet, move your hands and legs and arms and phone, and you can frame something absolutely spectacular. Now what I did here is I put that beautiful pink flower with the yellow in the center in the bottom right hand third, or sorry, bottom left hand third. And I made sure that I clicked on my phone to focus on that flower. 
Then I made sure that the rest of the photo flowed from there. From the pink flower, we move over to the red flowers and the red flowers lead us back to the blue and white flowers. And then there's a little bit of a mirroring with the red sculpture in the back, reminds us of the red flowers. And so we kind of bounce all over this image. And that's very often what a successful photograph does. It leads you in, but then asks your eye to move all around to really take in the totality as well as the entirety all at once. Here are some New Zealand fur seals, and I wanted to put a few other pictures that show you how you can lead from the foreground into interesting middle and backgrounds. Now here, you could get just a close-up image of the fur seals, but here I've chosen to really show off the incredible landscape that these gorgeous creatures live in. Now, this is from the Badlands in South Dakota. And here I used a stream bed to start to bring our eye into the landscape. I put the sky at the top third and the complementary colors between the reddish, uh, reddish brown sand dirt that make up these formations and the blue sky I thought really worked. Now, you can use complementary colors to help your photos anytime. And when you're confronting a garden scene on the left, you can get overwhelmed. Now, the picture on the left is nice. There's nothing wrong with it. But I really liked the colors of the blue and the yellow. But there's too much going on. There's no real focus in that scene. So I took my phone. I stepped in closer and I started to look at individual flowers. I was really thinking how the bluish purple complements the yellow color. And very often I like to utilize things in the background to show off and complement the foreground. So if you think of the color wheel, you can see that yellow, blue, and red are our primary colors. And if you mix yellow and red, you get orange, yellow and blue, you get green, red and blue, you get purple, and those are called the complementary colors. So anytime you can use that dynamism across the color spectrum, I think it usually works out well in photographs. Here, I've gotten in close. This is with the iPhone, and I've gotten nice and close to the bluish purple flowers, and the yellow in the background sets it off quite nicely. Here I used my other camera and I used a macro lens and I got in real close to this flower so that you can see each little individual um, petal and such and the yellow in the back kind of brings things around. Did you know that Disney movies use complementary colors to interest you and keep your focus throughout the entire movie? Now, before flowers bloom, they are also gorgeous studies in texture. So I really used, uh, this is from my Sony mirrorless camera that I use quite often. And here I used a lower numbered aperture. So the aperture is pretty wide open. And I'm on probably a F4 here. And I really liked this flower that is about to be beautiful and colorful. I liked all the textures, but I also liked the way when I focused just on that, all the lines blurred and led me to that flower. And there's also a hint of another one right down below it in the center. Now, I wanted to show you that my iPhone or whatever phone you have can take fantastic pictures and you can get really close to subjects and flowers are great if you like to do close up things like macro photography. Now you can purchase little lenses to attach to your phone camera or you can just zoom in and get close if you can with the subject matter, not with animals by the way. But here I got really close on this image this is with the phone and this is with my camera so you might be saying what's the difference 
Well, there's, there is a difference in certain aspects. However, if I was just posting to my Facebook page, my Instagram, or some other social media account, the picture on the left is fantastic. If I wanted to print something, that's when I bring out my other camera. A lot of photographers these days are using their cell phones to frame pictures and they'll take a whole host of pictures with their phone and once they've narrowed it down and figured out exactly what they like, then they'll use their other camera. Here you can see there are differences, but it's up to you whether those differences matter. Here I wanted to show you that I really love textures. And so I loved the spiky plant and this flower that is about to be a flower, but I loved the blues in the background. So I focused on the texture and the flower about to bloom. And then I moved around until I got a nice selection of the beautiful bluish flowers in the back. And so here again, I used a lowered numbered aperture so that only a small bit would be in focus, but I was very cognizant of my background and I tried to keep everything in the photo that I wanted and get rid of anything extraneous that would detract from my photo. Out in the backyard, the mountain laurel is starting to come out and it was just about sunset. So I went out the other day and I got really close to my subjects. I took pictures with the cell phone, I took pictures with my camera, and I just thought that these were lovely. But I wanted to focus on the background and make sure that what was behind the photo, uh, sorry, what was behind the image in focus was interesting and not distracting. This was really one of my favorites because I focused on the two flowers in the top right third of the image, but you can see that this comes from a beautiful bush shrub and I liked how everything else faded out in the background. You can take pictures of flowers from any angle, which is another fun thing about flowers. And you can look at them as not only a beautiful thing, but you can think of them as far as their textures and their shapes and their contrast with what is all around. Here, I got in close to these beautiful little purpley blue flowers, the periwinkle kind of blue that's one of my favorites, and I just wanted to show you how easily it is to change this shot by moving yourself, your camera, just a teeny bit. I moved it down so that we could then get the side view of the flowers and all the greenery around it, and then I got even more of a profile of the flowers. So you can see the stunning nature of these little buds. As far as which one you like best, totally your choice. But remember to move all around. While you're there, that's when you should take the photos. And take a lot. You can always throw them away when you get home. Now something else that I wanted to show you. I like to read news articles in the morning or in the night before I go to bed when I wake up in the morning and I was reading an article that there was a new app from Adobe for your phone and so I thought oh well that's kind of interesting and I decided hey you know I will download this PS camera Photoshop camera is what it's called and it is totally free I, I looked online for other applications and I found a few, but they all want you to subscribe. So I just wanted to show you, you can really spice up your photos and make some fun artistic stuff very easily with your cell phone these days. So the first thing I wanted you to see is I downloaded the app and I opened it up and you have a choice to use the PSC Studio which means you're going to use the camera in the application and you'll take a picture and it'll show you exactly what it will look like with the filter you've applied already on it. So that's PC Studio, PSC Studio. 
You can also just take pictures that you've taken with your camera roll. So I put up a couple pictures of my camera roll so that you can see all the images that I took in the uh, Sama Gardens the other day. And I turned some of both of these into some fun artistic stuff with the filters. I thought this was really fun. I took a picture of this beautiful little orange flower and the photograph itself is nothing extraordinary, but I said, huh, I think what I'll do is I'll take it in and I'll use the bloom filter. So down on the bottom, you can see a whole host of filters and you download these. And right now I downloaded a bunch for free. Who knows, maybe they'll charge down the line, but I chose the one called bloom. And I put a red oval around these little dots. And you can see that within that filter, there are several different blooms that you can try. So this picture on the far left turned into the middle and then turned into the one on the right. Then I took it to different filters. I tried Spectrum, I tried Pop Art. And within the pop art app, you can then make alterations to the vibrance, the highlight, the exposure, the contrast down at the bottom. So for all of you young people, you know how to do all this. Uh, for all of us older folks, it's something we have to get used to, uh, but don't be afraid to play with this. It's really easy. You can take whatever photo you want and then try out all the different filters. And when you're happy, you just push the little button and it downloads and saves it to your phone. Now here, this is a, a bland picture and I was shooting it on my way home because I knew about some of the fun filters I wanted to try. So I just pulled over with my car, took a quick snap, and, and then later I realized there were some power lines in it. So if I really wanted to work with this, I'd probably get rid of the power lines, but I took it into the application, I opened up the camera roll, and then I started to apply some filters. Here's a filter that makes it look quite artistic, and um, it looks like somebody you know, painted it or did pastels. Obviously, the lines are distracting there, so I tried another filter. Boom! Look at this. It turned it into a night sky that almost looks like the Aurora Borealis. So this is the same photo, just applying a different filter. Here's one where it puts huge popsicles and it adds a landscape. So you can still see my original image down at the bottom and you can see these huge popsicles. I don't know uh, what I would use this for, but it is kind of fun. Here you can see a starry night. You can really um, turn this daylight photo into something that looks like you shot it in the middle of the night with a tripod. And then you can get cartoony. So this one has kind of a storm effect and some cartoon lightning. And here you can even add fireworks. Now you can start and stop the fireworks as a little video and so I just freeze framed this particular frame but I thought hey I can add I can add fireworks to uh, a plain old photo that's pretty fun. Now I took my close-up picture of this flower and I tried some artistic effects on it so if you wanted to make it look like a drawing or a painting a watercolor you can do that. And here you can use some other fun effects to make it an interesting picture. You can even take something like uh, this just knot in the wood in a tree and turn it into something that is really quite abstract. So I just wanted to show you that there's lots of fun things that you can do and flowers are easy it's summer we can go out we can take pictures of them and then you can turn them into all sorts of exciting adventures i really like the abstract nature of this uh, interior of a flower and i thought this was a fun way to turn it into something that resembles pop art 
So here we go, assignment number seven, go outside, find yourself a flower or some other subject matter that doesn't really move, doesn't really uh, give you too many challenges and take a picture from as many angles as you can. This time, focus on the background as well as your subject matter. Move your phone or your camera around until the background complements your foreground. This is also great if you want to do a scene. So go out and find yourself a scene and think about layering the foreground, middle ground, and background to guide people's eyes through your photo. Bring us into the photo and it, do it in a very pointed way. You can also download a free app and get creative. And as always, post your favorites to the Southern Alleghenies Museum of Art Ligonier webpage and use this video post. And I'll be happy to make comments. Next week, we'll be back with... That's it for the Art of Photography number seven. I'll see you next week for the Art of Photography lesson number eight. My name's Kelly. Have fun out there. Take some photos, post them to your social media, and have a great time.